I never got a heart attack from using pre-workout, but I did get neuropathy. What's up guys, Derek Moore, PlaceMoreDates.com. Today we're going to be talking about uh, Doc Frank here. This is a TikTok. A lot of you guys tagged me in. A lot of tags on it to the point where I was like, hey, it's worth a video. And it seems like this guy's page, he is a addiction recovery coach. So as you would expect, um, he had a video about why pre-workout sucks kind of pop off. And now he's doing a lot of different like reaction videos to pre-workouts. And, um, you know, obviously as a addiction recovery coach, you can imagine what his stance is on anything that may reinforce negative behaviors and anything that can have um, addictive qualities. So a lot of this stuff in his page is talking about, you know, getting off nicotine, avoiding pre-workout, stuff like this. He also talks about his own negative experiences with pre-workout, which we will be getting into in the viral video that you guys tagged me in. Papa pre-workie. Working make the pain go away. Coming from someone who worked in... So, <laughs> they're putting a full scoop of Puri in an energy drink. So you can already see, like, roughly what kind of dosages we're dealing with, first of all. Like, what... It, I, let me see uh, what the original is, actually. I've never... I want to go see what... Uh, okay, let's watch the original first. Papa Pre-Worky. Pre-Worky make the pain go away. Pre-Worky make the veins go yay. She don't want me. Okay, well, by the way, if, how the fuck did I end up here on a bang energy hashtag? Um, if you take a shit ton of stims, it will make the vascularity go away. It will not actually make it go yay. In fact, that is where you have to make a decision on what you are desiring out of your pre-workout. Do you want maximum vasodilation and pump, or do you want maximum focus, attention, energy enhancement, etc.? Um, or do you want like a hybrid in the middle, but you're never going to get the uber like hyper extreme of each spectrum at the exact same time, really? Well, you can try, but <laughs> that's where you need like max hyper maxed out dosages of products in order to get that. And they are two contradictory different goals, obviously. So anyway, this guy's reaction is basically describing how his experience with pre-workout went. Papa pre working working make the pain go away coming from someone who worked in the supplement industry for nine years and probably consumed more samples of dmaa and pre-workout than physiologically possible i can okay so before he begins talking go into this with the information and the preface that he has used more dmaa <laughs> and pre-workouts that you know you probably shouldn't be using then is physiologically possible according to him i can guarantee you it doesn't make the pain go away in fact it caused a lot more pain that beta alanine tingle that you get in your hands and your feet one day i woke up and it never went away so what he's referring to here is the paresthesia you get from beta alanine and as you guys know i fucking hate beta alanine it is the itchy asshole ingredient that you need to be using a mega dose of to actually yield the performance enhancing benefits of it from and the dosages people are using in their pre-workout intermittently throughout the week because obviously you shouldn't be using a stimulant ridden pre-workout every single day of the week anyways are you going to get that efficacious dose built up in your system no you're not yeah obviously you could take it separately and build up your you know saturation point and whatnot but the fucking uncomfortable paresthesia you get the itchy hands, the itchy feet, the itchy fucking butthole that you can't even scratch in the gym because you look like a dumbass when you do it for the minor enhancement and performance that you probably won't even get from the dosage that you actually need to build up to to equate to that minor performance enhancing advantage. It's just a garbage ingredient that I fucking hate in my opinion. And now obviously, you know, some people like it. Some people like to feel something, but he is describing beta alanine right now. And the information going into this is that he used to be a DMAA junkie and it landed me a neurologist visit. And they thought I had MS, they tested me for a bunch of other stuff, but it turned out I had just fried my nervous system. In fact, it completely made me incapable of working out for a period of about two years. I couldn't lift a weight without my nervous system going from zero to a thousand. 
I can't even drink a cup of coffee or have a piece of dark chocolate anymore. So he says, hence my addiction coaching company and is helping people quit energy drinking pre addictions. So because this guy had such a negative experience, it should mean that somebody who is responsibly deploying cognitive enhancing agents, somebody who's responsibly deploying pre-workouts as a something to enhance their performance in the gym, no one should use shit because this guy had such a polar opposite experiment experience where it was so negative and he ended up frying his nervous system that you should avoid all this shit entirely because you're going to end up like him. Like obviously not, dude. Moderation, dude. Like no one's saying you should take a high dose of fucking DMAA every single day. No shit, something bad will happen. And it sucks that you had that experience, but it's not something you should push on everyone else. There is a way to intermittently deploy things that are commonly seen as like even nicotine used as a nootropic is not uncommon now. There are a lot of biohackers in the space who are very, very, like obviously if you have an addictive personality, you don't think you're gonna be able to tolerate it, like don't, but there are a lot of guys who are very well respected who will actually intermittently deploy things that are commonly seen as, oh, you know, the sketchy thing to enhance their mental performance. And even in the clinical literature, you will find that some of it is actually good for neurological health. Like nicotinic receptor activation is not something that should be overlooked simply because some people are addicted to nicotine. Now, another one that I thought was funny that I just kind of wanted to bring up before we cap it off here is, uh, is this one, this guy is taking some, uh, you know those companies that have, uh, like they're selling an illegal pre-workout basically, it'll have like a shit ton of DMAA plus like a bunch of other shit and it's usually the kids who have like fried goddamn brains who need this shit in order to feel something to go to the gym. And this is, like, <laughs> this is like a funny example of that, I thought. I never got a heart attack from using pre-workout, but I did get neuropathy, numbness and tingling in my hands and my feet. I did get really bad muscle pains. And I wound up with really bad fatigue. And I mean fatigue to a level where it was hard to get up. It was hard. Man, like every, every pre-work, like it's a fucking joke, dude. Like no one's actually, no sane person is triple scooping a illegal pre-workout. And this guy is like, everything he can do it, he's just like. The worst thing that happened to me was I had this thing happen where my central nervous system fried because I took DMAA every fucking day. Therefore, you shouldn't use it either. It's like, bro, come on. Like I get that your job now, this is what you're passionate about because it's relevant to what happened in your life, but don't push everything that happened to you is not necessarily going to happen to the next guy if they deploy responsible use. So, um, you know, the, <laughs> I thought this was fucking hilarious. Yeah, so the, like, obviously it's for fun. It's a fucking joke, that TikTok. And the guy's just like uh, basically saying nobody should uh, use pre-workout at all. Um, which I, I, obviously there are individuals who shouldn't take certain shit, you know, like there are a lot of people who have, uh, very addictive personalities and can't tolerate even minor amounts of certain things. And obviously it's an individual specific thing. Maybe I'm being a little too hard on the guy, but, um, in general, moderation is key with anything. And I think stimulant deployment, cognitive enhancing nootropic deployment, things of this nature can be intermittently used. And a lot of the clinical literature suggests that they do have positive properties that can enhance not only mental performance, but physical performance in the gym. And obviously that's a, de a desired outcome for a lot of us. And just because you had a negative experience, mega dosing DMAA beyond physiologic limits, doesn't mean that we should, you know, stop basic deployment of like very reasonable pre-workout selection in my opinion. So anyways, Thought that was a funny one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates. Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below my TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, Gorilla Mind, Nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre workout formulas. I designed myself from scratch and anything else I'm associated with. It's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.